some tips on what to look out for when you're at the Goodwill or when you are antiquing. You know, Goodwill is not just for the broke college kids. We have very influential people such as Kelly Wurstler and Athena Calderon, just to name a few, who use vintage in styling their homes and other people's homes just beautifully. So today I want to show you some of the things to look out for when you are antiquing or whether you are at the Goodwill. There are some things that you want to really keep your eyes peeled on. They're going to be investment pieces. And I'm also going to show you how I styled my home with some of these key vintage pieces. So let's talk a little bit about why buying vintage, why thrifting at all is a good idea. Well, number one, for the obvious reasons, it saves money. And retail prices right now on furniture is really high, especially if you love something that's very ornate or it has lots of character to it, you're going to probably spend a pretty penny. And stores like Crate and Barrel, West Elm, CB2, Anthropology, and even Restoration Hardware all pull influences from decades of the past, even centuries. We can find lots of rustic, antique um, quality in Restoration Hardware's dressers and tables. And then when we look at stores like West Elm and Crate and Barrel, we see a lot of postmodern and mid-century influence in those styles. A lot of the retail stores make a lot of furniture that looks like things from the past. So that's why shopping at antique stores and Goodwills are on an all-time rise. We have so many people really taking to finding antiques for their homes. Another reason for shopping vintage, vintage has lasted so long. If you look at the quality of a vintage piece of furniture versus what you would buy today, nothing holds a candle to it. Vintage is around for a reason. It was well made, it was well manufactured, and they just don't make pieces like they do today, like they did in the past. Um, so definitely you are getting quality when you are investing in a vintage piece. Vintage that has quality will definitely stand out. Another reason why you want to invest in vintage pieces and furniture is because it appreciates. If you have a piece, especially from a, let's say a well-known maker, there is resale value in that. There are pieces that are being sold at thrift stores and antique shops that go right under the radar. Most people don't know what they have and they donate it and they want it typically winds up at the Goodwill. Antique shops are a little bit more difficult. Sometimes they do know what they have. They put the research behind it and they sell it for a little bit of a higher markup. And so there is an investment process. Most of the times you can get lucky out of Goodwill and find it for a few bucks but most of the time you will take to an antique shop to really find um, what you're looking for to style your home. Buying vintage is timeless, and I've taken a few years to sort of really bring pieces into my home that I totally love and treasure. So let me take you through some of the things you wanna keep your eyes out for when you are at a Goodwill or any other vintage shop or antique shop. One of the first things that I always love to look through are the chairs. You would not believe how many mid-century modern, authentic mid-century modern chairs people donate. Usually it's when um, a relative has passed away and the kids do not want it. It may not be their personal style, so they will just bulk it and send it right off to the Goodwill and it typically ends up there. And people like myself and other people who are interior stylists and just collectors really flock to the Goodwills to kind of catch those moments where someone just didn't want something and you know, there it is. But I always carefully look through the chairs. I flip them upside down to see if there's any maker's mark on there. I also check the screws. I check all the bolts. I check to see, you know, what indication is this telling me if it's old? Because there are a lot, like I said, there are a lot of retail modern shops that 
replicate vintage looking furniture. And so you really want to identify, you just don't want to buy a piece of furniture that looks vintage. You want to authenticate it and make sure that it's truly vintage. And I usually do a very easy check by flipping the chair upside down. There's usually a label or a maker's mark on there. Um, that can instantly tell you a little bit of the history. There's usually sometimes, not always, a date on the label. Um, if none of that is present, then I always look at the screws. I always look at the nuts and the bolts because there were they were very different um, back in the 50s and beyond. Um, so the construction, the overall construction of the chair and how it was made um, will vary to how chairs are made today. So just understanding that little bit also helps in identifying if your chair is truly vintage. I have found extremely coveted vintage chairs for just a few dollars, so don't pass up the chairs. Another item that I absolutely have been so fortunate to find are vintage tables. Now, I went out hunting for vintage coffee tables since I moved into this home. It took me a little bit of time, I'm not gonna lie, to find the exact table that I was looking for. I think I went through maybe three tables before I found the one that really fit my aesthetic and the shape of the room, and it's this travertine tabletop. Now the table originally came with a wooden base that was sort of very, that was sort of postmodern in its look, which was fine, but it didn't really go with the ultra modern um, aesthetic that I was wanting for the space. So my husband and I lifted the, um, the travertine piece and I wound up having a plinth that I was using for photography to just as a, like a riser. And I said, you know what, let's try the plinth. And so we laid it right down and it became a super low profile travertine table. And guys, this is what I've been using and I have been so happy. I paid $25 for the whole table. And it's a really good, it's a 47 inch tabletop. So I've been so thrilled to have it. I love collecting stone tables whenever I can find travertine or marble i am always running to go check it out so never pass up the table section tables right now today are super expensive i actually just went to the um the crate and barrel outlet in pennsylvania and they had a and again this was the outlet so it was either returned or slightly damaged um and there was a gorgeous long marble dining room table they had almost six thousand dollars on that price tag at the outlets and i was just like wow i've seen tons of marble tables in my lifetime thrifting and antiquing that i wish i could house it all but i can't so they are definitely out there guys you know you definitely want to just keep your eyes peeled know what you want when you go into the stores you know know your personal style if you have a personal style and you know what you're looking for then have that in mind so that way it eliminates a lot of the time you're just walking around um, if you're looking for a coffee table go right in there and look for coffee tables and know the style that you are looking for there's been times when i haven't found what i was looking for and i became impatient and i found something good enough that i wound up flipping so there's always a diy process if you can't find what you're looking for then make it and guys you guys know that on this channel I did a lot of DIYs. You can see an amazing, huge marble plinth that I DIYed with my husband. So that was probably from last year. You have to go on my playlist and go under room transformations or DIYs. They'll probably be on both of those playlists. Another thing, probably my most prized things to be looking for when I go to the Goodwill is the decor, the decor section. It always captivates me. I'm always and forever finding something gorgeous on those shelves. Even if it's just one piece, I will always find that one beautiful timeless piece just waiting for me on the shelves. Now I will say some stores are definitely better than others and you guys know that. It depends where you are. It depends on the day that you're going. They are restocking, you know, so there's so many factors to consider um, when you go into the store and if you're going to wind up finding something. Normally you want to kind of find when they restock the shelves and you want to go on those days and you want to go early. So you can easily ask one of the workers at the store, when is their restock day? Some will say they do it every day. If they do, you want to ask, well, what time of day do they restock? 
they can tell you 10 a.m. So you wanna make sure that you can kind of squeeze in at least once to go in when they restock the shelves. That, you know, the early bird catches the worm, I always say. So guys, I have found beautiful vases and statues and just abstract items to decorate my home. I even turned it into a business. If you guys don't already follow Vendi Collections, I'll post the Instagram page link here and I'll post the website here. You guys can check it out. I just launched a new collection just yesterday. So you guys can take a look at that and see there are a few items left on the site. Another thing, as of lately, I would say within the past year or so that I've been really keeping my eye out on is wooden stools. I cannot get enough of wooden stools. And I'm not just talking about ordinary wooden stools. I'm talking about the rustic, primitive, antique wooden stools. Wooden stools are almost everywhere today. I have even seen wooden stools at Target. I've seen wooden stools in almost every retail outlet, but you want the real deal. And the reason I say that is because it is definitely worth some money. I have sold so many wooden stools um, in the course of me having Vendi collections for a pretty penny. Some of these stools can range from $100 all the way up to thousands of dollars. So don't pass up the wood stool section. Something else I never pass up, I always go through the artwork section. I'm always looking at the frames, I'm always looking at the artwork. There are serious people who make a killer on artwork. They, this is what they do. They make thousands, some even made millions because they are able to locate and identify art. I know zero about art. I just know what I like and I buy it. Other than that, you know, if I think it looks suspiciously like an investment, I will open up eBay and take a picture and start scrolling and identify it real quick because I don't want to just waste my time buying a big painting and have it sit in my garage. So I've learned to Google it really quickly, see if something comes up and what the sold price was for something that looks similar. So that's how I do that quickly. But I love collecting art. I love collecting vintage frames and vintage artwork. I love the one that I have here from the Bauhaus. It is a, a replica of the real Bauhaus picture. Um, the real one would be uh, thousands of dollars. So never pass up the artwork section, guys. You never know what treasure is in that bin. Something else that I love looking through may not be your cup of tea, but I love looking for kitchen decor. I have open shelving in my kitchen. Um, again, another video that I completely removed my kitchen cabinets and did a whole revamp and that video is also on my playlist you can find that but my husband and i removed the kitchen cabinets and we wanted open shelving and ever since then i look for really old um cutting boards and little vessels just to kind of like decorate it and, and bring that little vintage charm to the modern um, openness of the kitchen and I love that that's my personal aesthetic and so I'm always having my eye out on like little vases little cups little you know just anything that would fit into the kitchen and look presentable on my open shelves and something else that I love to look through are the mirrors I usually get so lucky finding vintage mirrors. I have maybe three of them in the garage right now that I switch on and off as I restyle and redecorate my home. Um, I have found mirrors that Restoration Hardware today sells for thousands of dollars that I have scored for just 20 bucks. So if you guys love that Restoration Hardware, you guys love that Anthropology mirror, Look for it, look for it at the Goodwill. I guarantee you, if you keep going, you will find it eventually. It may not be the exact shape, possibly, but you will find something very similar to it. Take your time, you know, collecting vintage takes some time. You're not gonna find everything in one 
um, in one pass. You're definitely going to have to collect through time. You're definitely going to want to take your time because as you are incorporating beautiful um, classic pieces, you want to make sure that they all match and they all sort of like tell the story and you want it to embrace your aesthetic, right? So you definitely don't want to buy it all at once. You want to really curate and carefully think about the vintage pieces that you are putting into your home. I never pass up a good lamp. Lamps right now are trending. My last video was all about 2022 trends and vintage lamps made that cut. Vintage lamps right now are just everywhere. And again, a lot of retail companies are taking to replicating those vintage aesthetics, those vintage looks. Um, and so if you can go to the thrift store and find it for five or $10, guys, it will save you hundreds and not thousands of dollars. So definitely never pass up the lamp section. All right, guys. Well, I hope this video was super informative. It was a little bit different from my usual video. I wanted to share a little bit about what goes on when I am thrifting, you know, my, the, the brain behind of what I'm thinking and what I'm looking for as I antique or go through the Goodwill. Sharing with you all of the beautiful pieces that I've been able to source. And so, all right, guys, that is all that I have for you this week. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. I post a lot of thrifting content, thrift hauls, DIYs, home styling. If that's the type of content that you enjoy binge watching, then I invite you to subscribe to this channel. I want to thank you so much for watching this week, guys. I'll see you in my next video soon.